This is the final battle of the series, which is Richmond, and I'm showing you the entire army. Uh, five full cores, uh, also five full supply wagons, over a million dollars. I have an enormous inventory of weapons. I haven't sold any weapons, and I could probably get another million dollars in weapons. Uh, very full officer bench. Um, yeah, it's... it's uh, Look at all those three-star units, all those great weapons, uh, 1863s, 1861s. Um, I'm surprised I'm actually going into the final battle. battle. My one unit, I, I thought I took the uh, Spencers away from my best unit, but no, I, I'm still going in with Spencers because I, I guess I just don't feel like taking them away and redistributing uh, weapons or buying a bunch of new weapons to replace them. But I certainly had the money to do that. So I'm going to put in all five core. Over 200,000 men. Over 500 guns. Almost all of the weapons for that army were free. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty overwhelming. The, the enemy has, it says, 59,000 and 185 guns. But really at no point it, does the enemy have any chance. Um, you can lose your entire army at any point here by simply attacking uh, with your entire army over open ground into fortified positions. These are pretty good fortified positions. But if you attack them each position with overwhelming force, um, the enemy has no chance. So the whole idea is that, you know, just like always, if you're going to hit the enemy somewhere, uh, hit... Uh, roll up infantry, and then roll up artillery behind it, and then hit that single point with a bunch of uh, infantry and melee and a bunch of supporting infantry firing volleys of fire into the melee units. And I love hitting these positions with then five cav units um, and then supporting infantry that are going to break through at the point of breakthrough and get into the enemy rear and do enormous damage. But uh, I think what you'll see is that in almost all cases, if there's a way to approach the enemy position from uh, some, ad some direction where there's good cover and concealment, that that's what I'm going to do. So even here in the very beginning, in the northern part, it's all open area, but in the south, there's lots of cover. So, of course, I'm going to take my army and put it in the south because there's cover there. And I think you see that over and over. I'm looking for for ways to get close to the enemy position with good cover and then bring together a mass of power and break the enemy line at a single point and then roll up the line. And if you do that over and over again, because this goes on through many phases, and this Battle of Richmond has many parts uh, to it. And look, here I'm going through, I'm going to get to the south um, of this map, and it's all through woods, but that's okay. It's going to take a while to get there. I'm going to take my time and get there, but it's going to allow me to approach the enemy position uh, with perfect cover and concealment. And... Yeah, it's, this is just uh, approach the enemy position, break it, wipe out the enemy forces, and so on, over and over again. And it's, um, if you've ever played Richmond, it's, it's uh, one position after another after another until you get to the final, final position and take them out. So after the several, I, I've divided this into six or seven parts, because Richmond is very long. It's a very long battle. Then there's the uh, the final episode of the entire series where you get the final victory screen, and, and then that's the end of the series. The entire campaign is very long, and it takes a while to get through it. So, you know, the, the game is really rewarding to play all the way to the end, but I suspect that most people start a new campaign before they get to Richmond. So anyway, hope you enjoy Richmond. And if you're going to play the campaign until the end,
this series of videos about Richmond should be very helpful to you uh, for planning your strategy. So thanks for watching.